welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and behind us is the all new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. That's right, it's the next generation Outlander that's better designed, bigger battery, more range, more powerful, better technology. Phew, lots to go through. Come and take a look at this. So Mitsubishi New Zealand are calling this next generation and that's really because Overall, this is the sort of fourth generation, but we only picked it up around the second generation around 2014. What they've done to it is revamped everything from the ground up. It really is a different, different looking SUV that actually has a couple of hidden secrets. We'll show you those in a minute. Up front here, what we've got is a, is a really shapely bonnet. And what it is, it's kind of sort of double power domed or anti-power domed in the middle. So it's kind of up over here, nice, nice wide haunches up the top here, and then a nice dip where the, you know, where a V8 would have a big supercharger or something sitting up the front. This front here is what they're calling an advanced dynamic shield face. Now, I have no idea what that means and I'm not looking it up but what it means I'm sure is just that it's a dominant busy face and it is. Looking around the side here you've got the DRLs here that also have directional uh, indicators. You've got a multi-story um, headlight setup here that is LED and lots of chrome garnish and a nice skid plate down the bottom here. So like I said busy face or an advanced dynamic shield face if you want to call it there. Down the side here we've got some lovely character lines so you know it, in the right light and with possibly with the light card with the right color there's more um, sort of good trading of light going on here. You've got body colored door mirrors. This one is the blue that looks a bit darker than that but uh, I think they're calling it Atlantic blue. Looking a little bit closer the wheels the, these are big 20 inches with relatively uh, thin amounts or skinny amounts of rubber on it so lots going on there and some nice sort of guard or plastic guard stuff around here to make it from there. Big thing to make sure that they're bragging about the fact that this is a plug-in hybrid EV massive you know badging here to make sure you do know that and like I said looking forward down here you've got uh, body colored door handles and some some sort of trim around here some chrome trim this one being the vrx model does have a panoramic sunroof or a pretty big sunroof but overall not bad and this side so you don't get confused this side has the petrol flap here and we'll go to the electrical side after we've been around the back the rear end itself is a little bit more expansive and um, you know it's got, got a bit of a, a wider girth around it. LED tail lights, let's see if I can show you those. And um, so that's going on from there. More Outlander badging, more PHEV badging and more scuff plates down here. The other good thing about this one is the fact that it does have a kicker tailgate which opens up to 634 litres of um, boot space here with the second row up. And also, if you come a bit closer, a 240 volt, 1500 watt just mains sort of plug-in bit here that can be operated from the, the driver's side of things. And look at this. This one is a seven-seater. Well, sort of. We'll show you more about that in a minute. Let's go around to the charging bit. Another little trick of this Outlander to make it extra special is the fact that you can home charge it through here or fast charge through a Chadibo connection right here. So pretty good from that. You can fast charge or trickle charge. Let's go into the bonnet. Those charging points are connected to a 20 kilowatt hour battery. That in turn will actually feed power or energy to two AC synchronous motors that are basically underneath the back here. And there's also a 2.4 liter ICE engine. Overall, what it gives you is 185 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque. So plenty from there. When it comes to efficiency, this one is uh, basically forecasted to do 1.6 liters per 100 kilometers. And when you attach it to a bigger fuel tank, a 51 litre fuel tank, the actual range you're supposed to get is 800 kilometres. So that's actually plenty. And also coming out of the emissions or coming out of the exhaust pipe, if the, you could see one, would be 35 grams of CO2. So overall does get that clean car big tick from New Zealand and you also get the rebate from there. 
Speaking of things that get a clean car tick, Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there. I may be eligible for the clean car discount or whatever Dave said, but this interior is not quite as an environmentally friendly as the exterior of the car. Well, to start off with the leather, so this is the VRX or the top of the range model and so you get plenty of that all around. So there's some PU leather along the dashboard there, the seats are just covered in the stuff and also there's a diamond quilt pattern pattern going through because of course this is a Mitsubishi, the three diamonds. There's plenty of side bolstering going on as well. The stitching is a, a sort of contrast lighter grey compared to the black and of course the seats are heated as well as you would expect on the top of the line model. In terms of premium finishes, well, the dashboard is made of soft plastic and then of course some other soft material. So at the top you get that soft plastic, then you get the, the faux leather and then some gloss pl plastic trim there highlighted with some chrome. So very premium looking at the front there. There is of course scratchy plastic here and there, but that's something to be expected. The trade-off of course is the fact that you get plug-in hybrid technology. In terms of practicalities, well, this is a, a family SUV, so you get good sized door bins, you get space for your phone over there, which is of course a wireless recharging port as well. You get two cup holders here, some space under there, and a few other cubbies here and there, so it is practical too. One of the things that's pretty unique about this Outlander PHEV is the fact that everything is kind of big and chunky for some reason, just like the car, I guess. Just look at this gear stick here, it's a massive thing. Um, even the dial to change your driving modes, it's a, it's a big rotary knob thing over here. The air conditioning controls, big rotary knobs as well, and everything is sort of very clearly labeled. Um, on another note, something else that's new about this new Outlander is of course that touch screen. So let's jump into the infotainment. Well, the new infotainment screen, well, it does lack a little bit of color. Everything is sort of gray and black and white. It is simple in the fact that everything has shortcuts over there and then also shortcut buttons underneath if you want to be really particular about things. This is the home screen, so it has all your, your vitals basically, your audio input, your location and your phone connectivity. And if you flick through, you can see some more of the apps and things that you can access via this screen. But the key thing about this infotainment screen is when you click into the information screen. So there you can see EV info with a little Outlander plug-in hybrid diagram there. So click into that option and you get this display. Energy usage, well that tells you how much of battery power, combined power you're using and the different ranges that you have, whether it's EV only mode or combined mode. So plenty going on there and if you hop back you can see the nearest charging stations you can set a timer for your charging you can pre um pre-prepare the car if you like when you're going on a journey so to start the climate control up so the temperature is at an optimum level for you ev settings this is quite cool as well so you can turn on and off whether you want to see charging stations and then of course mark your favorite charging locations as well so the ones with fast food restaurants check that box. The other big change with the new Outlander is of course the second screen which is in front of the driver. So let's take a look at that. So in front of the driver there the digital cage cluster is all new and it's quite complicated at first but let me break it down for you. So on the right side there you have the speedometer and then the little marker underneath there is your fuel gauge. You can also see down there there's a little icon that shows the combined range of both the pure electric and the petrol engine. Hop over to the left side and you see over there the bar at the top, well that tells you in EV mode whether you're sort of recharging or not and then also a power level indicator of how much battery power you're actually using. At the bottom that's the charge level of your battery and then you also get an icon there showing you how much range you have in pure EV mode. Staying with the left side you have an icon in the center there which is your average efficiency per 100 kilometers. So we've been doing 6.2 liters which is quite a bit higher than the manufacturer's recommendations but I guess we haven't been driving like the manufacturer either. In the middle remember that this is still an off-road sort of car and it's got a, a super all-wheel drive system so you've got a, a compass there for your bearings. We are heading for north at the moment and then in the middle it shows a little icon with the new Outlander on the road 
in your position. So if other cars go by and things that will show up on there. You also have the opportunity to customize that by playing around with the steering wheel. So these buttons over here control the screen in front of you. So if you look at my left side, I press the button there and go through for some more information. The battery temperature, um, the car's navigation. And then of course, if I keep flicking up and down, I'll get to some more stuff. And if I keep flicking down, I can go through other things like the battery charge indicator, the petrol economy, and a, a chart of my history of economy as well. So there's plenty going on there. Whereas on the right hand side of the steering wheel, well, you've got your cruise control there, and also the buttons to connect your phone to the infotainment system, so picking up calls and such. So there's plenty going on here. Now at this point, normally I'd say let's go for a drive, but just before we do that, let's take a quick look at the second row of seats. Well, in the middle row or the second row of the new Outlander, the luxurious feel continues here. Everything is leather covered in front of you and around you there. Nice soft leather quilted ag again. And you'll find quilted leather in the door cart. So really nice premium feel there. In terms of the space, well, this driver's seat is as far back as it can go. And my knees have a little bit of room there. Decent bit of foot room and headroom is not too much but if you are taller than six foot you might find it a little bit hard with that sunroof there they have thought about your rear passenger so you do get pockets there for your phone and possibly a tablet and some more storage there for a magazine if you're really bored the central tunnel well because the way this car works with the petrol engine and the electric system there isn't actually a big central tunnel at all so if you were sitting in the middle you could easily put your feet over there with no worries at all. While space in the middle here is quite decent as you can see, if you do want to use those two seats behind me, well the first thing you've got to do is move this middle row right up front into the back of the driver essentially. And then getting in, well I would show you but I can't actually fit in there. So um, it'll have to be the, just the camera this time. Take a look. See what I mean? Anyway, the part of the car that's more impressive is actually in the way it drives, so let's do that now. Okay, so the one thing I forgot to mention is the fact that this uh, uh, PHEV or the Outlander PHEV is basically New Zealand's favorite PHEV. We've sold tons or they've sold tons to us and um, it's so well liked. That's right actually and in fact the Outlander's favorite YouTuber is us. As you can see there's a special mode dedicated to Tarmac. <laughs> gotta be good gotta be good but i love that mutual mutual love which is great there's there are a few things let, let, let me get these things out of the way there are a few things that i'm not overly impressed with with this vehicle firstly the seats those two seats at the back i mean they're a great idea but the reality is I, you'd have to be a contortionist to get in and also uh, I don't know the size of a size of a thumb to be able to sit in them and like I said I really like the idea but the reality is they don't they're not really that practical the other stuff is I'm I think the efficiency is awesome although this does pick up nicely that's right, it does navigate the balance quite well. Remember that it has to balance between using petrol or electric or both and you really can't feel the changes, they are simultaneous. One of the cool things as well of this system is that you can actually turn on a mode which allows you to essentially one pedal drive it, which is use the accelerator as both a, an accelerator and a brake. Yeah, and that's good. That, that brings out the lazy side of me. So, whereas when I was growing up, I used to have to use three pedals. Uh, I think the, 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 young, the younger people here won't, reckon, uh, won't remember. There, was, there used to be a clutch. But anyway, now you can just use one pedal and away you go. So that's the lazy side of me. Um, and it is quite efficient as far as that goes. It does top up very nicely. 
The other thing is you can actually switch through the EV mode. So you can go through normal EV, you can save the battery charge you've got or actually charge from there. So as, as far as charging up the, um, the, the EV side of things you've got, you can use the, the fuel to do it, you can use your trickle charge or you can use fast charge. So many ways to get that 80 kilometers of expected EV only range. One of the other interesting things about this car is not that, of course, it's a plug-in hybrid um, EV, so you expect to commute and stuff like that and do your regular sort of SUV duties with it. But being a Mitsubishi and being the fact that it's got a sticker that says SAWC on the back or Super All-Wheel Control, it's actually got three or four different modes dedicated to off-road driving, which is just insane, you know, for a an urban SUV like this. It's also got hill descent control. So they really have thought about that historic rallying or historic off-road ability that comes with the Mitsubishi badge. Yeah, it's fun, and, and that's, you know, you're right. But on the tarmac, the tarmac mode, which is, you know, great, the it does handle so nicely there's a there's a lovely sort of weight to the steering it drives nicely it points exactly where you want to go which is obviously very exciting when you're in a car um but it is the it's possibly a little bit too light in the steering but it i don't know it, it really does handle nicely there's there's a lovely balance to it and as matthew pointed out earlier there is a seamless mix between going from ev to petrol or back to ev so great from there Though while you are on the road, you might notice that there's a bit of road noise that comes through and especially on a longer drive that might get a little bit um, sort of jarring to the ears over time. Um, although the ride is pretty smooth in general, it does have its, its bumpy and crashy bits. Visibility all around is good. The, um, the A pillars aren't too wide and the uh, mirrors are big and there's there is sort of plenty of view out the back and comfort wise these seats are very comfortable and as very you know very i like the i like the texture i like the sort of the, the texture side of things it's good the quilted leather does really give it a a premium feel not just on the seats but on the door cards as well it makes up for all all the places where it has scratchy plastic where it shouldn't have scratchy plastic yeah agreed but on the whole, the look is good across the across the um, the bonnet. I like the sculpture of the way that goes through, and like I said, the the, the actual finish is not bad. It, price wise, this is sitting around the sort of seventy five grand mark in New Zealand, which does edge it towards quite a lot of or a fair amount of premium suvs always sort of getting into that market but then this having the PHEV side of things does take it to that extra level so it's very much sort of in that um, that ballpark of a lot of other european brands and um it has the design and the sort of um quality in some areas to um to compete with that love the screens big nine inch here and big uh, 10 point something inch here so very digital very full of display and also the head-up display is massive as well so it does bring up all the information when you move the the controls on your steering wheel that pops up as well so there are plenty of things that pop up on this H, uh, hud which is which is great and they have given it a nine speaker both audio system as well so make it even feel even more premium on the inside here it's not the best system but i guess once you toggle around with the settings you can really get it to pump out your tunes in the way you want it yeah and actually <laughs> really annoy the people right in the back <laughs> when they're trying to get their feet sorted out well <laughs> economy wise to get 800 kilometers out of a battery and um uh, ice engine vehicle is is really good and the emissions side of things getting that that uh, rebate for New Zealand is, is bound to be a good thing as well so uh, it does tick all those boxes as far as that goes it's actually the rebate is five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars so quite a large amount of money that you can then spend on specking it up with a lot of options so there you go yeah, although saying that, it doesn't require too much more yeah. spec. There is plenty going on in this VRX model. 
and also the big thing you know we are harboring on about the fact that it's a PHEV but there's so much information about the charging about your economy about your your emissions that there's so much going on as far as how your driving is to make sure you really are hitting heading towards that 1.6 liters per 100 kilometers so good job there the one thing we haven't touched on just yet and that's the power that it's delivering the 185 watts kilowatts sorry and also 450 newtons actually picks this car up nicely it does handle the speed really well i mean this is 100 kilometers per hour going around the corners ugh, quite tightly and picking up well i mean it does seem to pick this car up well and drive quickly oh some rally history there oh i might try to get some air i think there's just something about having that engine at the front and then your battery and motors at the back which sort of gives a really good balance to the car yeah and there is there is a good balance but like i said there is the pickups good like really good oh i could get all my kids throwing up actually i've only got one so there you have it the new mitsubishi outlander PHEV in case we haven't told you the PHEV it's also seven seats as well nah seven seats but anyway the design is I don't know it's uh, like beauty's in the eye of the, hub, the, the beholder obviously but for me it's a little bit busy up front but the rest of it's all right the tech inside is massive it, uh, i think as um matthew pointed out it really is a bit of a nerd fest when it comes to information coming your way particularly written when you come to the electrical side of things and the power the the increased power and range i really like it there's tons going that way um it's you know it's a, it's a good all-round <coughs> five seven seater and with the all-wheel drive system and the sort of diamond motifs around there's a little bit of mitsubishi history there as well there really is thanks for watching make sure you subscribe it will be around here actually through the sunroof there anyway and see you on the next one see ya